three years with a Nissan Leaf, 2012 Nissan Leaf, uh, with the nav, with the sunroof, solar panel, with the alloy wheels, with the all the bells and whistles, with the quick charge port, everything. Uh, I reserved this one and paid the price to get it as soon as it came out. $320 a month with three grand down. Pretty penny, but 30,000 miles, 32,000 miles later, I've saved about the 12,000 that I've paid into the car um, in gasoline and oil changes and everything else <laughs> and polluted air. I uh, just want to give you a walk around of the car. Uh, four doors, um, 16 inch wheels, nice trunk. Big enough to take my take-home toolbox, load it right in the back. I would flip the uh, flip the mat over and just put it underneath. Um, this charger, this comes with the car. You can see how worn out it is. Um, this was basically my only charger when I wasn't charging at work because I work in Nissan. So uh, I did most of my charging at work. Uh, but when I was at home, I would use this and We actually had to file down these things because they would get corroded, but this is pretty heavy-duty and I used to just throw it in the back um, Used to keep this little uh, padlock This is pretty cool. A lot of people don't know about this, but um when this is plugged into the front of the car, you can take this and you can lock it down so that it can't be disconnected from the car. So even though you're plugged in on the street, with an extension cord or whatever, you're locked in. Um, just a little... And that's pretty much it. Solar panel on the roof. This would just keep the 12 volt battery from getting discharged so you're sitting there listening to the radio. Uh, we have a problem. Uh, rear heated seats uh, work really well with the car seat for uh, my one-year-old. Uh, we actually brought him home from the hospital in this thing. First ride in an electric car. It just turned out that way. That was the car we had that day. Um, nice leather steering wheel. Um, let me just show you underneath the hood. So yeah, got the quick charge port. Uh, I've never actually used this. Um, this is for, you can charge the car in 20 minutes, but um, only they only have them in like New York City, uh, so I wasn't able to use it. This is your main uh, charger. Charge the car in about five hours on 220 or eight to 10 hours on 120. Um, underneath the hood, not much to do except top off your wash. So that was literally the only thing I did. No oil to check. It kind of looks like a four cylinder. It's kind of funny, but yeah, I mean, there's no heat generated, so everything is just really reliable, you know, at the end of the day. Top off the wash, check your air pressure, replace your wiper blades. Rotate your tires. That's that's your maintenance. Oh, and I think I changed the uh, the cabin filter for like the air conditioning. I don't know, Ten bucks. Let's go for a ride. Uh, these keys are really cool. You can just keep them in your pocket. That was really nice. So when you walk into the car, you don't have to do anything. You just keep them in your pocket, um, and you just push the power button. Um, I shut off the stupid uh, soundtrack effect noise that they would they had it's like Some weird chime noise. I don't know it used to wake my my kid up So I shut it off and it was just annoying to me Navigation um, I Just I use the map sometimes that was nice you can find chargers where you're near charging or other Nissan dealers That was cool uh, you can look at your um, 
energy info to show how many miles in your energy uses when you're driving. I mean, most of the stuff I just use. I love the Bluetooth streaming was really nice. Um, XM, all sorts of stuff. So just really comfortable. Nice uh, automatic air conditioning. The heater in this is really uh, inefficient, but it works well. I would use the heat, the seat heaters a lot, uh, and the steering wheel heater. And a lot of times, it's all you need, and you don't lose a lot of uh, a lot of range. So. All right. So I, when I got this car, I just drove around the block once, and. Uh, knew instantly that it was just like perfect, a perfect car, and it really is. It's a hatchback, it's small, it's, it maneuvers really well, um, you know, for, for me and my wife and my one kid and friends that we had, we could just, we could do everything. In terms of range, um, yeah, it's the big question. Right now it says I've got 65 miles. To me, that really means like maybe I've got like 35. <laughs> but even if that's the case, even if you get half of what it says or a quarter of what it says, you're still going through your day and you rarely really use more than like 20 miles. So if that's enough to get you back and forth to work and you plug it in at work or you plug it in at your house and you wake up the next morning and you're good to go with another charge. This is how I put 31,947 miles on this car. And all I would do is back and forth to work. Day after day after day, three years, just uh, no question. And uh, it really held up well, you know. It's uh, suddenly you start to feel like the car is just a car. It's just an appliance. It's not something that you stress over and is not going to get you where to going and you go to the service center and they're telling you you need to flush every fluid in the entire thing and it's overheating and it's, you know, it's burning fuel and you have all these different sensors and everything. No, it's just you plug it in. What's your range? How much range? Let's roll, you know? That's always the question of an electric car. You never, and once that's out of your mind, you're good with the, uh, with your commute, you start just thinking of it as a car, as a cell phone, as a, just an appliance, really. So, uh, that's nice. I think, you know, this is the first generation of a mass production car electric car and um, I don't think it's good for everyone because I think a lot of people don't really think about um, you know they're they're worried that they won't be able to get somewhere when they really need to but for the people who really understand the importance of driving electric and what it does for our air quality and in the end saving money, if you can take the responsibility, a different responsibility for your range, I think uh, it's really the future. Because we're still sort of in the era where people are always stressing about their cars because they're inherently unreliable. Anything that generates 250 degree heat with an exhaust system and all these different fluids and these lubricants that are always breaking down under the heat and all this stuff, and the pistons that wear and everything, it's just uh, inherently it's gonna destroy itself so it's kind of a different concept to feel like this car basically performs exactly the way it did 30,000 miles ago um, I've lost um, maybe I don't know maybe 10% 7% worth of range um, over the course but you know in the end it's the question of like how far do you really need to go and if you're able to charge it where you stop and you're always leaving with a full charge it's like leaving with a full tank you never think about stopping to refuel because you just refuel where you stop <laughs> where you would stop so that's that's a cool paradigm shift too not not going to the you know just refueling at your house or refueling at your work 
never spending time to like maintain your car. I mean, literally, you could drive this until your tires pop. That would be the first thing to break on this car, is your tires just getting a flat tire. Because wiper blades, you know, people will just not use their wiper blades and, you know, they're hanging off sideways, but it's not raining today and so I don't really need them and that's not a problem. The cabin filter, no one changes that anyway because they, I don't know, like their own pollen BO smell. I don't know. <laughs> it's nice not having an oil change sticker in my window, you know? I don't know. It's, uh... It's definitely the future, it's just gonna take a little while for people to make the shift, you know? They're just, they're still stuck in like, oh, well, I'm gonna drive to Florida, or I'm gonna drive to New York City, or, you know, I'm gonna do this and that. Okay, absolutely, I totally understand. There's times where I borrowed my wife's car, you know, and she's not really ready to have an electric car. She's always paranoid about the range. Um, you know, and I would have to take my wife's car to go to the airport, but, 